With the release of Darktable 3, the Denoise Profiled module has had a significant overhaul. And in this video, we are going to look into just what's changed. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 59 of Understanding Darktable. Uh, the developer known as Raw Finer has done a pretty significant overhaul of the Denoise Profiled module in Darktable 3. It is quite changed from what we had in 2.6.x. And so I thought we would have a look at this. And in the course of this video, I thought we'd go back to one of the images that I processed in episode 19. And it's a shot of a, an equestrian rider from Cordoba in Spain uh, in 2017. And this was shot on my Alpha 850, which, you know, is now a 10 year old camera. And I always knew that shooting at 6400 ISO on that particular camera, I was always going to have a bucket load of noise. I pretty much avoided shooting at 6400 ISO on that camera whenever I could. These days on my A7 III, whole different ball game, but this is what it is. I shot RAW, as I always do, and I've always held on to RAW files for exactly this reason, that at the time of shooting it, I was shooting with the only and the best camera that I had at my disposal. I was aware of the shortcomings of that camera, but I've always taken the attitude of shoot raw, keep the raw files forever because you never know what advances in technology will come years from now that might enable you to reprocess this file and achieve results that are not available with today's software or in this case with 2017's software, because that's what I had at the time. And so, yeah, I thought we'd revisit this image and have a look at the results we got with the original Darktable 2. Point, probably was 2.4 back then, I'm guessing, um, processing versus what we can do today in Darktable 3. So let's dive on in. So what we are looking at here is the processing that I achieved with, I'm assuming, Darktable 2.4 two years ago, three years ago, two and a half years ago, whatever. So if we zoom right in, we can see that, yes, there is still a lot of noise there. And if we were to undo these two denoise profiled modules, we would see the truly horrendous nature of the noise of a Sony A850 at 6400 ISO in dim lighting conditions. It was pretty noisy. Now, if you haven't watched episode 19, or if it's been a long time since you originally watched it, allow me to refresh your memory. Back then, the prevailing wisdom was use two instances of denoise profiled, one using a blend mode of lightness to tackle just the luma noise, and then use a second instance with a blend mode of color, which would tackle the chrominance noise. So basically, one denoise module simply tackling luminosity noise and another instance tackling the color noise. Now, what Rawfiner has said with the release of Darktable 3 and the overhauled denoise profiled module is that it is now no longer necessary to run two instances of the denoise profile module, and you don't need to use the blend modes either. So I thought what we'll do is we will create a duplicate sidecar file so that we don't lose what we've got here from my you know, Darktable 2.4 days. 
and that way we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I will go to the duplicate manager, create a duplicate. That duplicate now inherits the original processing from the original sidecar file. We can now jump back so that we don't have those denoise profiled modules. Actually, before I do that, let me just put those back. Because one thing that has been introduced in the newly overhauled version of the module are these two checkboxes down here. And the one I want to draw your attention to is the last one, Upgrade Profiled Transform. So if you have images that you have processed in the past on earlier versions of Darktable, so 2.6.x or earlier, where you have used a denoise profiled module and you want to keep the module there, you don't have to reset it. You can simply check that box and it will use the new Darktable 3 algorithm that's built into the denoise profiled module without you having to, you know, reset it or switch it off and switch it back on or anything like that. Having said that, utilizing that upgrade profile transform checkbox, I'm not sure how that relates to the sliders that have changed. Although I guess that's all part of the algorithm. So feel free to use that or simply just remove the module and start from scratch. Okay, so let's jump back to just before I had applied those denoise profiled instances. As I've always said, zoom into 100% when you're doing your denoising, because that's really where you're going to see exactly what's happening to your luminance noise, your chrominance noise, how much detail you're keeping or sacrificing. And let's just work our way through this module now. As has always been the case, there is a profile which will automatically read the EXIF data of your image and it will identify the camera body that shot the image as well as the lenses that were involved. It will read the ISO and it will apply a noise profile based on that ISO setting from that particular camera. And in this instance, it's found a match for ISO 6400. Next up, we've got a checkbox, White Balance Adaptive Transform. And as you can see from the text, Adaptive denoising according to the white balance coefficients. This should be enabled on a first instance for better denoising. Should be disabled if an earlier instance has been used with a color blending mode. Now, what I'm not sure about is why that is even mentioned if Rawfiner is saying you don't need to use two instances and you don't need to use color blending modes. Obviously, some people are still in the habit of using two instances and using the color blending modes. So if that is you, you are going to use two instances and you're going to use the color blending modes and use one instance to tackle luminance noise and one instance to attack the chrominance noise, then on the second instance, presumably if you're doing them in that order, luminance and then chrominance, the module that you're using for the chrominance noise reduction, you would uncheck this checkbox. So it doesn't need to be running in both instances if you are using a dual instance approach to your noise reduction. All right, so there are four modes. They are non-local means, which is the default, non-local means auto, wavelets and wavelets auto. So we'll start with non-local means. That is the default algorithm for the module. First up, we've got the patch size, and that is the radius of the patches to search. So increase the size of the patches or the number of patches for more sharpness on strong edges and better denoising of smooth areas. If details are over smoothed, reduce this value or increase the details slider. Like everything in noise reduction, there are trade-offs to be made. The search radius, emergency use 
only. Radius of the neighborhood to search patches in. Increase for better denoising performance, but watch out for the long run times. Large radii can be very slow. You have been warned. <laughs> okay, so use that one with care. Then we've got the scattering. Scattering of the neighborhood to search patches in. Increase for better coarse grained noise reduction, but it does not affect the execution time. Now the help file says this slider is only available if non-local means is selected. It controls how far from a pixel the algorithm will try to find similar patches. Increasing the value can give better results for very noisy images when coarse grain noise is visible, but you should better use the scattering slider instead. The processing time is hugely impacted by this parameter. It depends on the square of the parameter. A lower value will make execution faster. A higher value will make it slower. So it just sort of expands on what the little pop-up tooltip said. As for the scattering, scattering of the neighborhood to search patches in. Increase for better coarse grain noise reduction does not affect execution time. So it kind of sounds like it does something similar to the search radius, but without the processing time penalty that the search radius parameter introduces. The help says this slider is only available in non-local means. Again, like the search radius, it controls how far from a pixel the algorithm will try to find similar patches, but it does this without increasing the number of patches considered. As such, processing time will stay about the same. Increasing the value will reduce coarse grained noise, but may smooth local contrast. So essentially what that's saying is that if you set the scattering too high, you might start to lose a bit of detail in your image. This slider is particularly effective to reduce chroma noise. So that's your color noise. All right, then we've got central pixel weight, the details. Increases the weight of the central pixel of the patch in the patch comparison. It's useful to recover details when the patch size is quite big. So if we do make the patch size large and we start to lose detail, then the idea is that we can increase this as well to try and bring some of that detail back. The help file for the central pixel weight slider says, this slider is only available in non-local means and non-local means auto. It controls the amount of details which should be preserved by the algorithm. It can be used as a way to control the amount of luma noise smoothing. Giving a large value to this slider will result mostly in chroma noise smoothing with little smoothing of luma noise. So in other words, low values on the central pixel weight will do more for your luminance noise and higher values will do more for your chrominance noise. So if you want equal weight, go somewhere in the middle. The help file also says that if your patch size is set to zero, then the central pixel weight value has no bearing whatsoever on the algorithm. Okay, so that's non-local means. Non-local means auto essentially tries to automate most of those parameters for you so that all you need to do is adjust this second slider, which is called adjust auto set parameters. So if you want the noise reduction to be a little stronger, just increase that value. If you want it a little weaker, back it off a little bit. But then again, there's a strength control as well. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between the two. Okay, next up, we've got the wavelets mode. Now the wavelets mode, didn't mean to uncheck that, has two color modes. There is an RGB mode whereby you can apply this curve across all RGB channels simultaneously, or you can go to each individual color channel and modify the curve for each particular channel. 
So we can adjust red, green, and blue independently of each other, like so, if you wanted to do that. Let me just reset that, go back to wavelets mode, go back to RGB, and I keep on adjusting that checkbox when I don't mean to. So that's the RGB mode, and one side of me seems to think with Aurelian's insistence we should be going towards an RGB workflow that maybe we should be working in RGB color mode if we are using the wavelets mode of the denoise profiled module. But the default mode is Y0, U0, V0. And this is based on the YUV color space where Y is luminance and U and V are the red and blue channels respectively. When we are in this particular color mode, we then have two different tabs for this graph, just like we did in the RGB we, where we had four. We had all red, green, and blue. We now have the Y0, which is our luminance channel, and U0, V0, which is our red and blue channels. So we can adjust the luminance noise on this white graph independently of this orange graph, which allows us to process the red and blue information within our image. And that just leaves us with the wavelets auto mode. And essentially the only thing that changes is this strength parameter and the preserve shadows parameter respectively become adjust auto set parameters and strength. Why didn't strength just stay where it was in the top spot? I don't know. I guess there was a reason for it. If it had been me designing it, I would have just left strength where it was and changed the preserve shadows slider to adjust auto set parameters. But anyway, I didn't design it, so I can't comment on why he did it that way. Okie dokie. So with all of that said, let's reset the module, go back to non-local means, and let's see what we can do to process the noise in this image and whether or not it's an improvement over where we were in Darktable 2.4 with two instances of the module using two different blend modes and yeah, let's see how we go. Okay, so I am going to start by increasing the strength. And that's done a pretty good job straight out of the gate without touching anything else. Try increasing the search radius. There's a slight change there, but I can't say whether it's a change for the better or a change for the worse. Uh, remembering, of course, that this particular parameter will slow down the processing. Yeah, that's that's hard to tell. It's I see a slight change in the detail, but it doesn't appear to be worse nor better in either position. So I'll leave it at a low value of seven. And let's try some central weight. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference there. It seems to me that the strength parameter is the only one that makes a a truly visible difference to the image. Now, is this an improvement over where we were two years ago? Well, let's jump back to that previous image. Okay. That was two years ago on Darktable 2.4. And this is today on Darktable 3. I tend to think that is a better result. And that has only required the one instance of denoise profiled, no use of a blend mode whatsoever. So that's using non-local means. Let's reset the module and we'll turn off the film strip. And now we'll go over to the wavelets mode. Now I'll go to RGB and we'll have a bit of a a play in RGB mode and see what we can achieve here. Now, 
I didn't go over again the way this graph works because I'm hoping you've already seen one of the other two videos that I've done on noise reduction and you already understand how this works. Let's just take a stab at all and let's just go mid-sized. Let's just reset that and set that to be a much wider. Whoa. And so, as we can see, that's giving us that horrible pastel painterly look that I was complaining about two years ago. So obviously, that's not a great approach. Let's try narrowing that down. If we go finer, yeah, see, I see, I still feel as though this particular approach is turning it into big blobs of flat color. It really robs it of detail. I actually think the non-local means was doing a better job. Now, I could try approaching it on individual channels just to see what happens here. Yeah, again, I, f I feel like I'm just losing too much detail. Uh, there was something too, and um, I will confess to having forgotten the exact details of it, where if you were going to use this approach with the three individual color channels, that you should also introduce a channel mixer module and then check the individual color channels, R, G, and B, in a grayscale mode. Yeah, oh, wow. I'd, I'd have to go back and watch my own video to recall what that process was all about. And it was related to the fact that when we see things like these red dots, you know, that is red chrominance noise, it's not always related to the red channel of the RGB data. Sometimes those spots can be related to the green and the blue channels collectively. Uh, and it was all about identifying that using the channel mixer module uh, to really hone in on which color channels within the RGB were contributing most to the noise in the image. And sometimes it was contrary to what your eyes were telling you. So I will leave you to revisit that if you feel like you need to. Okay, let's just reset this. We'll go back to wavelets and we will leave it in the default mode of Y0, U0, V0. So if we want to approach the luminance noise here, I'm actually not sure how much of this noise is really luminance because I, I kind of get the feeling that the majority of the noise in this image is chrominance noise. So I'm going to start with the chrominance and let's just, let's just hit this pretty hard and see what happens. Not a whole lot. Come on, chrominance noise, be gone. No. Is it all in the coarse end of the spectrum? Wow. Okay. We've got it all cranked up there and it's really not doing anything. Let's just turn up the strength here. Okay. Let's turn it up further. Ah, okay. So now it has actually removed some of that chrominance noise from the image. If I reset that, but leave the strength wound up to 2.3, I can't remember where it was at, at its default value. Let's just do that again. Oh, okay, so it starts at 1, as you would expect. Okay, let's just dial that up to 2.5. That does a pretty good job of reducing the chrominance noise in the image, and yet has still kept quite a decent amount of detail, I've got to say. Like, I, I'm not seeing those big splotchy dobs of paint like it's a pastel painting that we were getting in the RGB mode. So, so maybe that's one of the reasons why this Y0, U0, V0 uh, color mode is the default and not RGB. 
because it does seem to be a little bit more forgiving with the detail in the image. Okay, so having said that, now let's have a look at the... Oh, okay, so that strength parameter is adjusting both the strength of the luminance graph and the chrominance graph collectively. So I guess now I could say, well, I now want to tackle this luminance noise that I can see. The chrominance noise has been reduced just by having increased this strength parameter. Now let's see if we can get rid of some of this luminance noise. So if we wind that up a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sold on it. It's maybe a mild improvement. Yeah, nah, not really. Yeah, to be honest, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of difference with the use of the graph. The strength parameter seems to do something, but I'm not finding that the graph is doing much at all. Okay, I think I have... Uh, talked about this as much as I feel comfortable talking about it. Uh, there is the bias correction, which simply allows you to uh, correct for color cast in the shadows, decrease if the shadows are too purple, increase if the shadows are too green. Um, I don't feel a need to adjust that. So I am going to leave it at that. I actually think that out of all of this, the non-local means probably did the best job out of everything, although not in those settings right there, that looks pretty awful. Um, but the settings that I did dial in a few minutes ago looked pretty good. And to my mind, were equal to what was achieved two years ago with two instances of the module and blending modes, except now it's one instance of the module and no blending modes. So your mileage may vary. I guess it'll all depend on the image you're trying to process. I will leave it at that for now. I will say thank you once again to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you for your support. That is much appreciated. And I will see you in the next one.